and welcome to Ask Me About K-Pop, the essential guide for recent converts and seasoned fans alike. My name is Shannon. And I'm Angelica. And welcome to the show. Um, we have a little something special for you this week. Um, scheduling of life got out of hand this week, mm-hmm. and we didn't have time <laughs> to prepare a full episode. But since we just took a spring break, we didn't want to leave you guys with nothing in the feed this week. <laughs> Um, So we are, as you can tell from the title, releasing a Patreon exclusive into the free feed. Um, So you can, after this intro, you will hear the first episode of Queendom Season 2 recaps. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hopefully that will inspire you to watch Queendom 2 if you're not watching it yet. And also maybe inspire you to join our Patreon where there's lots of fun uh, content every month. Um, yes, including these episode recaps, which Shannon has been doing weekly, I believe. Mm-hmm. So there's a whole, if you enjoy this recap, think of it as a nice little teaser, pow, little taster. <laughs> um, and you can go onto Patreon and listen to recaps of the whole show thus far. I know the show itself is pretty long, which is one of the reasons I haven't started watching <laughs> the show itself, even though I love my Hyolin. I have been diligently keeping up with the performances. Yes. Of course. Um, but yeah, so if you're kind of like me and you don't necessarily have the time or the like ganas to like <laughs> sit down and, and <laughs> watch these two hour shows, but you want to know what's going on, then Shannon's got us covered and she has been recapping it for us. Um, so we can kind of cheat the system and watch the performances and listen to the recap. And it's almost like yeah. we're watching the show too. totally caught up, <laughs> totally caught up. And as a special treat for the people who already do pay for patreon and have already heard this episode i didn't want to leave y'all in the rain either so after this little episode we will come back to play a random game so that this will be a regular old episode with a little something for everybody yeah look at how considerate we are always thinking about (laughs) (laughs) y'all Um, All right, so strap in, enjoy this recap of uh, Queendom Season 2, Episode 1, and then we will be back after for a random game. Hello, my beautiful babies, and welcome to the very first uh, Queendom recap on Patreon. I'm going to be talking about this entire season of Queendom 2. I'm so excited. I love these shows so much. Um, So I'm going to try to make it a nice balance between like a full recap in case you're not watching it, but also not spend too much time recapping it in case you are watching it so that I can put a little bit of my own spin and flavor and opinions or whatever on this um and as stated in this week's regular episode i am doing this first episode by myself because my dear angelica has not watched the show yet but hopefully she will get caught up and be able to join us in future episodes so um let's get started i guess i am talking about queendom episode one uh this is somehow being uh, listed as episode two in some places because as I understand it Mnet released like half of this episode a week early as a preview episode and then showed the full two hour thing again last week anyway this week's episode is like already out so (laughs) I'm gonna get this one out and then immediately go watch the next one uh but yeah all right here we go queendom season two so we started out with this like very drama chess intro thing where we had all the excuse me where we had all of the leaders of all the groups coming in like one at a time in this very like dramatic kind of like castle set and then sitting down at a chess board and being like we're gonna win and going one at a time so the first group to go was Vivi's and this is three members of formerly G friend and I have a lot to say about this later but we'll just talk about their intro so for their intro thing they did a song called crown of number v and they were wearing these like very pretty bedazzled tops with like black shorts and one of them had like long black gloves and like they were really pretty and there was like lasers and stuff but I feel like the dance that they did it was like kind of vogue and kind of like I don't know. I just feel like it was not quite the style of dance that these girls like usually do. And not to say that they weren't 
pulling it off. But like, I don't know. It was slightly awk. It was slightly, slightly awk. But they looked really good. They looked really good. Then we had our Luna uh, little intro performance. And Luna did their song Satellite. And they were wearing these like very pretty. I mean, not very pretty. (laughs) They were wearing these like white um, sheer like button downs with only like one button buttoned and then like big baggy white pants. It was very like first gen SES girl group look. I liked it. I like think they looked really good, like all in white. Um, And they did like a long dance intro with smoke on the ground. And then when it got to the chorus, they like sang the chorus. Um, And I thought theirs was really good. Good intro to Luna. Then we had the intro of Brave Girls and they did a song called Genesis, which seemed to just be like, a techno version like a techno song that had some little clips of Roland like little sound bites of Roland kind of mo- moved in there like it was like a Roland remix but anyway they were wearing like oversized sparkly suit jackets and like little fedoras and like I really like Brave Girls I really like Brave Girls okay but I think that one of the like glaring things about this show that I noticed from watching Road to Kingdom is that Your performances and like what the group puts out is heavily dependent on the company that they came from and how much the company like wants to spend money or time on things. And so it's like not a very fair competition in that way. So anyway, point is, I love the Brave Girls, but like their intro stage like looked like the cheapest and like the choreo was like just kind of not it. And I think it's just because, like, Brave Brothers is probably a cheap ass. And, like, you know, these other groups come from huge companies and probably have access to, like, insane choreographers. And I wouldn't doubt that the Brave Girls had to make this up themselves. Um, Anyway, I just really love them. But, like, I was kind of sad that they had to do this, like, little lackluster opening in there. And there are sad outfits. Anyway, more on Brave Girls making me sad later. Uh, then it was time for WJSN's intro. They did Save Me, Save You. And they were wearing these like little blue, navy blue, like little princess dresses. So cute. Big, tall, like white go-go boots. And then before the, like they do a long like floor dance at the beginning. And then when it came time for like the big chorus moment, their dresses were like those inside out reveal dresses where they like pulled them and turned them inside out. And then they were white dresses all of a sudden and they like stomped forward. And it was really cool. It was one of my favorite moments of these intro stages. Like I love a costume reveal moment. So good. Um, then it was time for Kepler's, uh, intro package and Kepler is a brand new group, but they were all on that show, Girls Planet 999. So they've already done a competition show and I think they're a temporary group too. I can't, I should look that up. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, but they have so much pep. They have so much pep. They were wearing these like very cute little cropped, like white like a like a uniform shirt but like cropped and then like a little um cheerleadery tennis skirt and then they had purple sashes that said like Kepler on them um and yeah they have so much pep and energy they're so like young and wow so excited love that for them uh and then finally we had our intro to Hyolin and Hyolin did her song started her song Nine Lives wearing this like little sparkly crop with like leather leathery joggers and like really tall stiletto boots um and then like when she sings sings the little part and then it goes into dolly and she put a baseball cap on and she like does her whole like raunchy dolly dance all by herself she's alone she's killing it it's great um so that's we've introduced all the groups in this dramatic castle chess board set so now we cut to the real set of the show Um, And there's like a big screen on the back. It's the same uh, stage as they did for... I don't know what they did on Regular Kingdom. I've only watched Road to Kingdom, so I apologize. This is my only point of reference. But on Road to Kingdom, they had like this very long, like horizontal set almost where like... Or not like vertical. I don't know. It's just like a long rectangle and the groups sit on like either side, almost like the middle is like a catwalk or something. Um, So it's that set. 
the brave girls come in first and they have like this screen that says since and then it like leaves a blank and then it puts in the debut year so like that's the little teaser for each group so brave girls comes out first they like admiring the set like oh my god i can't believe that we're here then they cut to vivi's at their company um and they're talking about how they basically just debuted again like even though they've been around for a really long time like they just debuted and they want people to remember them and know them as this new group um then let's see then we cut to kepler in their in their company they're so excited they're making so much noise and their leader comes in to tell them that they're all going to be on queendom they are like absolutely freaking out. They're so like little and excited and it's very cute. And I saw for the first time, like I knew that she existed, but in this section, I saw Huning Kai's sister. I think her name is Huning Bahie. I'm not sure how she says it, but she literally looks exactly like him. Like she looks like Huning Kai in a wig. It's so hilarious to me. They look exactly like each other. Okay, anyway. Uh, then we have the intro, a little intro to Luna. They're like at their company sitting in little, uh, chairs and they talk, it's like really sad. They like talk about how like Luna has had all of these like chances and then their company has like fucked it up by like losing lots of money or everyone got sick from coronavirus or they had to cancel this or that. And they like mate they like frame it really sadly. And Luna says that people pity them. So like it's setting them up to be kind of like sad underdogs and this show is definitely going to do a lot to try to like sell different images of people and make some people look like assholes and make other people look really nice and cool um so i don't know just something to be aware of that like all of this is edited in a very specific way so if you think someone's coming off like a jerk i don't know maybe it's the editing and maybe they are a jerk i don't know just something to think about so anyway luna is sad um then they oh so they like cut to like backstage at a luna concert and it's like a silent concert which is so strange like i don't know if we've talked about this on the regular podcast yet but in south korea they have started doing physical concerts again but the rule is that the fans can't make any like noise with their mouths they can clap but there's like no wooing no cheering no like fan chants so they show this like huge luna show and there's all these people in the stadium and they're just like golf clapping and it's super strange but like that's what's happening now so back to that in a little while um but anyway luna goes backstage after this concert and they surprise them in the like dressing room and letting them know they're going on queen dump and they're so excited um then we go to wjsn they're extremely confident like i feel like they <laughs> I'll say right now, I feel like WJSN and NVVs are being set up to look like the biggest assholes in this competition. Like, they are not doing anything to make them look humble or kind or anything. And maybe they're not humble and kind. Like, it's okay. I'm just saying that's all that the show is showing us. So WJSN is, like, sitting there being very, very confident. They're talking about how their songs are the best songs and how nobody else can do their songs and, like, that they're definitely going to win because they're the best. Um, Let's see. Then, oh, uh, then we cut to the Brave Girls at their company. And, like, oh, uh, this was so cringe. They, like, had all four of them in a recording booth, like, just – screaming the Roland court like chorus like pretending to be recording it like they're not recording it that song is like five years old they're not re-recording it and they wouldn't all sing around the same microphone I don't know it's just like a dumb setup to be like look they're working so they leave the recording booth and there's like a present there on the table and there's a letter from Brave Brothers and they like can't believe that he wrote them a letter. They're like absolutely shocked. They've never seen his handwriting before. They say that the letter is like way too nice and that he's not that nice to them. So I thought this was really funny. Like, I don't know. He tried to make himself come off like a really cool CEO, but no, no CEOs are cool. <laughs> um... Let's see. Yeah, they were they're so shocked. They're so shocked that he sent them. Uh that he sent them a letter. Sorry, I'm trying to read my own notes and now I'm like getting confused. What did they say? Oh, they also I wrote that they imitated Brave Brothers' voice. They were like, ooh. That was very funny. 
Um, then after this Brave Girls part, they give us like a teaser montage of like what's going to happen in the rest of the episode. But if you finished the episode, you can see that this little teaser is edited extremely deceptively and they make it seem like everyone is going to say super mean things to each other as soon as they all get on stage. But that's not what happened. And they just like cut the clips together in like a weird order to make it drama. So then we go back to our main Queendom set and WJSN comes in and they are like very intimidated because the brave girls are wearing Chanel and they're like, their clothes are expensive. We look stupid. Sola from WJSN like tries to engage brave girls and she's like, oh, you guys, do you know who else is coming? And brave girls like can't answer her. They're like so shy. They're so shy. Um, next up, the screen changes to since 2018 and the WJSN members are like, oh, 2018, we were doing this song, remember? And one of the brave girls is like, what song were we performing in 2018? And their leader's like, nothing. We weren't doing anything then. And then they're sad. They're sad. The inclusion of brave girls is making me sad. Okay. Um, Luna comes in and WJSN is not stoked, not stoked. Because they think that Luna is the group that is the most similar to them. Because they have a lot of members. They, like, do kind of similar concepts. They're from around-ish the same time. So, like, both group, both WJSN and Luna say that, like, they did not want either group, like, each other to be there. Because they, like, see each other as real rivals. Which we'll get to again in a little bit. Um... WJSN tries to engage with Luna like did you have fun recording your intro like what song did you do and they like don't want to answer they're being very cagey and then like Sola makes a joke about like oh I'll tell you what we did and Ekshi the leader of WJSN like shoots her the meanest like the meanest leader eyes and then Sola did this very cute like little cactus hands like froze like eek because she fucked up and it was very funny. Um, and then after all this like little cute thing, they cut to brave girls and they're like, we don't have any friends. We don't have anyone to talk to. Again, so sad. Why are they being so sad to the brave girls? Um, then let's see. The screen changes to since 2222. Everyone's like, oh, OK, rookies are coming in like we can relax. And one of the brave girls says they were just born. And it was really cute. Um, so Kepler is like backstage. They're freaking out over like absolutely everything in the waiting room. They're like, oh my God, the blankets say queendom. Like oh, there's a list on the wall that says like, what order we come out? Like they're just so excited to be on a TV show because they're so new and it's very cute. I felt similarly about the group TOO in Kingdom Road to Kingdom because they were also brand new and shocked by everything. Um, huh, what happens next? Do, do, do. Kepler's freaking out. Then Kepler comes out to introduce themselves and everyone is like so tickled by their energy because they like introduce themselves by like shouting and they just have like deep, deep rookie energy. When they sit down, one of the members of Luna like tells them like, oh, I like your song, Wadada. And little Kepler, like they all stand up and they're like, oh, thank you. Because they thought that like nobody would recognize them. And I guess there's like a moment from the first kingdom, Queendom, which I did not watch, where um, Oh My Girl came out and Park Bomb from 21 said, who are you? <laughs> What's the name of your group? And they just were really afraid people were going to do that to them. So they were excited that Luna um, knew their song. And then somebody asks how old the Makne of Kepler is, and she says that she's 18. And the brave girls, like, start doing math to figure out how much older than her they are. And their leader's like, stop it. You're going to make yourself sad. Um, yeah. Because I think, I mean, at this point, the brave girls are, like, technically the oldest. But they're, like, they're not old. None of them are even close to 30. I don't know why I thought that the brave girls were older than they are. Maybe it's because I'm forget. like maybe people in the original Brave Girls lineup were older. I don't remember. Anyway, um, what happened next? Okay, now, Vivi's comes out to the main stage in their like 
these beautiful, glamorous, like, white outfits. They look, like, really expensive. They, like, intimidate the fuck out of everybody, like, as soon as they walk out. And, like, that's what they wanted. They, like, cut to a talking head. And Sinby's like, we're going to lie and say that we just came from a stage. Like, but we didn't. Like, I just want them all to be afraid of us. Like, again, they are setting up Vivi's and WJSN to be confrontational and overconfident or whatever and then this leads to what I thought was like the actual scariest piece of drama in this whole episode so Vivi's goes to sit down and WJSN start jokingly talking about how even though G friend is WJSN Sunbay because they del- they debuted before Vivi's is brand new so they were like, oh, they're like, we're the oldest. Like they're like, they're just rookies. They're just rookies. And they're all laughing. And Sinbi hears this and she looks over at them and she goes, Yoruma, like gets Yoram's attention. Oh my God. So scary. And when she looks at her, she's like, don't you think that we are your seniors and you should respect us? And Yoram's like, "Ah, uh, yeah. And she's like, well, then why don't you tell your group that? And like, ooh, it was so icy. It was so icy. And maybe, maybe as soon as she said that, everybody laughed. And it was actually like a really lighthearted, fun moment. But the way that they edited it on the show makes it very, very scary. (laughs) Um, So yeah, that scared me. That actually scared me. Um, Everybody is very curious about this last seat. We only have one empty seat on the stage left. And they're like, who is it going to be? And the state, the screen changes to since 2010. So actually gets like everyone in the room to stand up because this is like a super zombie, like none of them. They were all kids in 2010. Um, she, then they WJSN goes and like wipes the single chair off, like to make sure that it's ready for whoever's going to come in. Um, Hyolin comes in. Everybody screams. Everybody screams. Um, and then we like cut to, uh, Taeyeon or Taeyeon, Hyo Lin's company, which is called Bride I th- or Bridge. I can never tell because the E is a three. So I can't tell if it's supposed to be like, anyway, uh, they cut to her office and show them asking her if she wants to go on the show. And she's like, I've done so many competition shows like, eh, but sure, it'll be fun. Um, then. I'm going to I'm going to for the rest of the episode keep track of how many times I cried during this and it is way more than I thought it was going to be so cue my first tears now that everybody is here they bring out Taeon they introduce that Taeon is the host and then they do a little package of all of these groups talking about how important Taeon is to them and how Girls Generation inspired them to be idols and like whatever and how They are the blueprint, and I'm sobbing because I love Taeyeon, and, like, it was just really sweet to hear everybody say such nice things about her. So that was my first cry count. Um, Then they bring out some dude. I can't remember his name, but there's, like, a dude, the other announcer dude, and him and Taeyeon, like, explain the rules. And they're really complicated, so I didn't write them down because I honestly kind of don't care, but I think essentially it's, like... Every single performance, like, the groups will be able to vote for each other, and then there will be judges in the audience who will vote, and also the YouTube views of each performance will count, like, times a thousand. There's, like, a lot of complicated math, but the point is, is that people are going to get, like, voted by popularity. So Luna is, like, immediately scared, and they talk about, like, oh, shit, we don't, like, get good YouTube views, like, we're fucked. Um, And then they explain that there is like an even meaner twist of this one, which is that if any group comes in last place twice before the finale, they will be booted off the show and they don't get to do the final episode, which is such a bummer. So everyone's scared. I'm running out of breath. I usually don't I usually don't do the show by myself. I'm just talking so much. Okay, then we get into a section where. The groups are going to have to choose a rival. Taeyeon tells them that they all need to choose who they think that their rival is. Um, And everybody's like immediately scared of this. And they like don't want to be chosen as a rival. But as it goes through, 
people's feelings change. So first they reveal that brave girls chose Vivi's as their rival. And here is my cry count number two, because the brave girls explained that when they were promoting, like they debuted around the same time as G friend. And when G friend was winning all their music trophies, like early in the days, brave girls was always part of that crowd of idols in the back, like clapping while they got their trophy. And so they've always just kind of like looked up to and like kind of envied G friend and like wondered like, but what if it was us instead who had gotten popular at that moment? So like, that's why they chose them. And I cried because I feel bad for both groups. (laughs) I really do. Um, So then they ask Vivi's who their uh, rival is. They choose Hyolin because typically on these shows, sometimes you have to perform other groups songs so they were like we would most want to do sistar songs so we choose hyolin hyolin chooses kepler as her rivals and everybody can't believe it but she says it's because they have so much rookie energy and are like so stoked all the time and like so loud and like giving like 400 percent because they're new and they're scared and that Hyolin feels the same way. Like when she is performing by herself, she feels like she has to give 400%. And so she thinks that she's on a similar level to Kepler, which I think was really cute. They were like so touched. They couldn't believe it. Uh, Kepler chooses Luna as their rivals. And they say it's because both groups are confident performers. And so they felt like they matched well. Luna chooses WJSN for very obvious reasons, as stated earlier in the episode. Like, these are groups that kind of consider themselves rivals in the regular world. Um, Both of their names have similar, like, both of them have Sonya in their Korean name. So, like, I don't know. It makes sense. I think it makes perfect sense. Um, Then it's time for the last rival choosing. And no one has chosen Brave Girls at this point as a rival just to reiterate that so it's wjsn's turn and they're like very scared because they didn't pick brave girls and they like feel bad but they reveal that their rival is hyolin and now um this is my cry count number three because they explain that you know a wjsn when they first debuted like starship was calling them like new sistar or like little sisters of Sistar like the point was that they were supposed to be like the next girl group at Starship so they like always looked up to Sistar and whatever but specifically what got me is that actually starts talking about how she was on Unpretty Rap Star before she debuted um, with Hyolin and at the time people wrote lots of articles and tweets or whatever calling her like extra and saying that she was like it was like a two for one sale and that she was only there because Hyolin brought her and like whatever just basically disparaging her and saying she didn't deserve to be there um and she said that it was a really hard time but that like Hyolin was so positive and like you know gave her somebody to look up to and like you know made her feel better about everything that she was so grateful to her and looked up to her so much and so the host the boy host is like you guys should hug and the all of wjsn starts screaming and they're like oh my god can i take a picture of it like i can't believe this so i'm guessing that actually is not a physically affectionate person maybe she does not hug very much but hyolin like runs and gives her a hug and then they cut to this like talking head again i'm still crying and actually is like her perfume she still wears the same perfume that she did back then and like just smelling her like reminded me of like all those times and what a comfort she is and she said quote Hyolin was always a page of my dream and that she's just like can't believe that they're competing on the same show now and like it was getting me it was getting me so nobody picked Brave Girls as a rival but the boy MC is like well, we don't know if that's good or bad, so don't worry about it. They don't do anything with the rival thing. It was just a conversation to have. So next is the introduction of the round, which is going to be signature song. So they need to choose a song to perform that they think uh, 
illustrates their vibe as a um as a signature song so uh then they do this really long order choosing section and I did not like write the full recap of it because I honestly found it like uh, boring and too drag too dragged out like it was not that exciting but it was like they let them like pick the order and then like three groups wanted to all go last so then they had to like I don't know just duke it out and be like whoever is brave enough to run to the board first and choose I don't know it was stupid but anyway point is our final order for the first round is going to be Vivi's first then Hyolin, Kepler, Brave Girls, Luna, and WJSN will go last. So then we get another teaser montage and it's like day, day minus seven, you know, like it's seven days till the performance. And it's a very tense, dramatic montage of everyone like sweating in dance practice rooms and being like, I don't know if we can pull this off. And like, yeah, hella drama, get excited. So then we cut to it's filming day and it's like the vans are all pulling up to the studio and all the groups are getting out and getting to their uh, uh, dressing rooms. And when they get to the dressing rooms and look at the set list order on the door, they notice that there's only five names on the list because all of Luna got coronavirus and they could not perform at this. So cry count number four, Hyolin gets a marker and writes their name on the poster anyway, because she wanted them to be there in spirit. Ugh. Okay. Uh, then they show the audience coming in and like explain why it's okay that the audience is there, like showing them all getting tested and like fever checked. And everybody has one of those masks with the clear window. And I think it's so they can see if someone is yelling who's not supposed to be yelling because they're not allowed to make noise. Um, they're not allowed to make noise. That's part of the rules. They explain that. Um, then the show starts and we find out that Kepler has never performed for an audience before because um, they are a Pandemic Times group. So this is going to be new and exciting for them which is very cool. Oh, I also wrote down at this point that when the boy presenter comes out, um, G from Brave Girls is like, oh, he's so cool and hot. She like takes a moment. And she's like, oh, he looks good. And I was like, all right, girl. All right. Um, then Taeyeon comes onto the stage and she was wearing like a three foot wig, like this blonde wig that like almost touched the back of her knees. Like it's so long. But everyone's like freaking out like, oh, my God, she's so beautiful. And she is so beautiful. Um, but her and the boy like start explaining the show. Oh, no. First, they say that they have a present. They have a present for all of the competitors. And they play this track of like pre-recorded cheers. Like, I don't know if they recorded them outside when the people were coming in or if they had people send them in or something. But it's just like a composite of a bunch of people screaming to give them the vibe of the screaming since no one's allowed to scream inside. Um, and then they explain the scoring and how the rounds are going to work again. And again, I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And it's probably rigged anyway. Um, so Vivi's is first. And they come out on stage and like, they ask them, like, oh, are you nervous? Like, how did you decide if you were going to perform as a G-Friend song or a Vivi song? And then we cut to Vivi's in their company conference room. Um, this is when I start, I'm going to call it cry number five. However, <laughs> this is literally a 14 minute. I cried for 14 straight minutes, starting at the point where they call former G friend member so one um, and they talk about how much they miss each other and they ask her what songs they think they should perform and she picked the exact same songs that they thought they should do and then they like um, they talk about how they didn't want to disband like they like go into the whole thing about how it was just like an absolute shock that Hybe just like disbanded them in the middle of things and that the girls who are Vivi's are like still really sad and they're not used to being a different group because they just want to be 
G friend and they like accidentally introduce themselves as G friends sometimes still and like this made me really 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 sad really 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 sad um so then we cut to their performance they are wearing like beautiful white like tooly like short princess dresses and there's a beautiful sparkly crown for like the queendom of it all um they looked so beautiful and they do a uh performance of time for the moon night into rough um and they like changed up the choreo a little bit and like tried to do it to just feature the three of them but like I don't know again I'm still like absolutely sobbing through this because like these are g-friend songs that everybody loved these are the songs that put them on the map and now there's like a bunch of them missing it's like only three of them and they're trying to show that like they've grown and that time has changed but like that they don't want to let go of this part and everyone in the audience is crying everyone is crying um after the performance they show this kepler member yes i think she is the youngest one if i'm not mistaken and she's crying in the waiting room and they cut to a talking head where she explains that when she was like yeah that that rough came out when she was like nine years old and that she used to just cry in her bedroom listening to it and like thinking about an unrequited love that she would never even had and like oh my god that was killing me too as also an overly emotional nine-year-old that cried to lots of songs like that was getting me um and then yeah they go around the waiting rooms and all the other all the other members of all the other groups are like sad for Vivi's just trying to imagine it like trying to imagine doing one of their signature songs without half of their members and how must they feel and everyone's getting like really upset and specifically Unso from WJSN is like wrecked she is absolutely wrecked sobbing like worried about her friends and thinking about the sad of it all and then as soon as Vivi's gets off stage their member Unha like can't hold her tears in anymore and she starts sobbing and again I'm still crying I just cried for 14 straight minutes and they like show people in the audience crying like everyone is crying I'm crying everyone is crying it's so much it was so much so then we cut to Hyolin in her dressing room and she looks absolutely fucking amazing. She's wearing this like little green, this little like um, kind of limey, olivey green uh, halter top and these like beautiful hollow sparkle like little, 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 little shorts with like full half butt cheek out the bottom and these big green go-go boots and like her hair is kind of like wet and crunchy looking she looks so amazing so then we cut to Hyolin prepping for this whole performance like sitting in her studio and watching all of her own videos and trying to decide what song she wants to do they decide to do touch my body they show her going to like a flower shop and picking out like all the tropical like flowers and stuff that she wants to use for the set and then she meets like all the dancers and they are, are getting ready for the whole thing. We go back to the main stage and Hyolin is like sitting in the dark on the stage. She's like about to get started. But then she's like, wait, wait. And they like show her rushing off the stage instead of starting. And it's like, oh, no, what happened? And then there was like the fade to black that it went to commercial after that. And then when it comes back to commercial, the performance just starts. And she like the set is all like raised up and down and there's all these LEDs to look like a waterfall and it looks like she's like sitting on a waterfall and she also has this big long like open hollow sequin robe wrap thing that is beautiful and there's like men in jeans and white t-shirts like holding the palm fronds and stuff men as props love it and she's like welcome to paradise and the, everyone in the in the waiting rooms is like dying um, Unha or Unsol from WJSN like falls to her knees and is like, Annie, please! Like, they can't believe it. She's so amazing. Um, and yeah, she does touch my body all by herself with like 40 dancers. She's like doing all of these like runs up on top of it and like making it way more complicated than the, than the original version, which again, in the original version, 
she had to she shared the chorus lines um with other members and this is her doing it entirely by herself so it's very very impressive like the dance is so good she looks so cute everyone's like having so much fun the boys in white tank tops at some point have like horns and are like mimicking the like horn part it's just like a big beautiful party and it it looks so great it looks so great so after the performance, everyone is so shook. They're freaking out. And then they show uh, Hyolin coming down the stairs and she looks really disappointed. And then she like hits her shoe and it's like, ah, damn it. And they explain that when that the reason there was that false start is because when she went to go sit on the stage, the platform of her huge go-go boot like completely separated from the top of the shoe. So they had to like glue it really fast. And it didn't come off and she didn't get hurt. But Hyolin was just talking about how she couldn't really perform, concentrate on the performance because all she was thinking about is that the shoe was going to break and that she was very, very worried about it. Um, But she did a great job. And that is the end of the episode. Then they cut to the preview for next week and they show WJSN like get coming off of stage and Unso again like sobbing and is like it's all my fault I can't believe I did this I just ruined everything for everyone so I don't know what that's going to mean based on the road to kingdom meltdowns that people had like that it will probably be a very small mistake that no one will notice but her but maybe it's terrible I don't know it could be a very big deal so um yeah that was the first episode Like I said, I cried a whole bunch of times. I cried a whole bunch of times. Um, I'm like already very attached to everybody, even though I don't have like deep, deep attachments to the people on this show. Like to begin with, like I love Hyolin and I like WJSN a lot. And like I like the Brave Girls and support them. But like I don't, you know, it's not like I super stan any of these groups, but like I feel like I will by the time it's over. Um... I just love a fun competition. I love seeing people like interact, like even though they make it seem much more dramatic than it is or like, you know, edit it deceptively to make people seem like they're mean or like they're not friends. But I find that all really fascinating. I love seeing how different companies work. I love seeing how people like handle the stress and then like the performances at the end of it are also fun. So I'm really looking forward to the rest of the show. Um, I'm excited to see the rest of these first round performances and see how they go and see who wins. Um, Right now, I feel like Vivi's have a really good shot because they really like nailed everyone in the heart with that performance. But I mean, we'll see. We will see. So excited for all the subsequent rounds, like excited to see people do some weird covers. Like I'm curious if anybody, if any of these groups are going to, you know, like pull uh, the boys and try to do like elaborate set pieces or or any of them like do any of these girls know how to do flips like is that stuff gonna happen I don't know I'm super looking forward to it so um if you are watching along I hope you're enjoying it as much as me if you're not watching I hope that this recap uh gave you a good idea of what is going on so that you don't have to watch it if you don't want to um but yeah thanks for listening and hopefully by next week i'll have anhidika here to also help me talk through queendom if not i'll be back by myself because you know that i love this so um thanks for supporting our patreon and uh i'll see you next week for more queendom bye all right we are back and uh, i hope you enjoyed that little bonus episode and the random number generator gave us a really easy assignment this week it knew we sure were did. crunched on time <laughs> and it chose a star of this podcast someone who came up like in every single one of the first like 30 episodes of this podcast and that is none other than Beckyun from exo Beyond Beckyun <laughs> from exo the one the only guy we love to hate yeah <laughs> But sincerely do love. Sincerely do love. <laughs> he's just a little, he's just a little, he's just, just a little silly shit. little shit. Like, I don't know. He's just a little shit. Even this picture on his Wikipedia, like the grit, he's just so cheeky. Mm-hmm. He like knows how popular he is. And he just like, he's, yeah. 
He's just a little shit, which I say endearingly, yes. like parentheses affectionate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but so Bjorn Bakyam, born May 6th, 1992. Um, he is one of the lead or main vocals of EXO. Um, one of the also- last, if not the last member added, right? Like that was yes. his, he was one of the least trained EXOs was cast yeah. at the last minute. <clears throat> yeah. And we talked about his casting, I think in the EXO deep dive where he, or maybe in one of our like early, really episodes early, about, episodes. like how <laughs> people got, became idols. But he was cast like while he was taking um, like an entrance, ex- like a school entrance exam or something. And he had been supposedly he was like humming to himself as he walked to the bathroom and like an SM scout heard him and was like, you come here <laughs> and like immediately put him in EXO. Um, and yes, I believe he was one of the last ones to join because he has talked about this multiple times. They talk about it all the time on Knowing Brothers. But he is, like, notorious for breaking the ice with his members by hopping into the shower with each one of them to be like, we have to be brothers, so this is the fastest way for us to get comfortable. I'm going to join you in the shower. Um, Only so that's nude Beckham. bonding. <laughs> Only nude bonding. Only nude bonding. Um, he loves to run his mouth. He talks all kinds of shit about EXO, um, and it's hilarious. Uh, he's also a member of the subunit EXO CBX. He's the B. And he is in Super M as well. Um, but he made his solo debut, like, what did you say back in like 2016? In 2016, he released his first. He released a little uh, so a uh, single called Dream, and it was a duet with Susie from Miss A. Mm, okay. And then he released a couple of SM stations in the following years, but his first like actual full EP album as a solo artist was City Lights in 2019, and he broke records yeah. with that album. And yeah, this album sold more than half a million copies the year that it was released, and it became the best-selling album of a solo artist of the whole 2010s in South Korea. Um, and his follow-up EP sold over a million copies and became the first album by a solo artist in Korea to do so in over 19 years. Um, so he's very, very popular. I think we said this in the EXO Deep Dive, but he is like undeniably the most popular member of EXO. Mm-hmm. Um, and And he is apparently labeled as the genius idol, which is a label I've never heard attributed (laughs) to him before. And I can only assume it's because of like how well he sells and not a moniker because of his smarts. But I not to say that he's dumb, but I don't know how smart he is. (laughs) But I can just only assume he kind of comes off as a little bit of a his mouth is very smart. Yes, like my grandma would say, he has a smart mouth. (laughs) He sure does have a smart mouth. Uh, Um, But yeah, yeah, he's released a ton of music like in all of these albums and like most of the other songs on the album also chart like Mm -hmm. everything he's ever released has like charted, uh, including all of the OSTs he's participated in and like. He also did a stint in Singing in the Rain, like, back in, like, 2014 or 15. So he had, like, one little moment as a musical boy. Cute. Um, Yeah, he's released four solo EPs so far. Um, City Lights, Delight, Baekhyun, and Bambi. Um, Delight is a Japanese release. um, And the others were released, um, obviously, they were South Korean releases. And currently, he's in the military. Um, So he is on a hiatus. I literally always forget that. But yes, that's true. (laughs) He is in the military. I I was just thinking about EXO the other day. Because I was thinking about, I was, I don't know, I was thinking about something and I remembered like all those moments that you and I have had complete brain farts on this show and just like forgotten that EXO existed. (laughs) And I was like, who even is out of EXO right now? And I like couldn't really remember. I was like, I I, like tried to like count on my hands, like who's in the military, who's out of the military. And I think I forgot that (laughs) gun. I was like, I'm missing somebody. And I think it was him. So maybe that's why we got this now. So he could yeah. be like, excuse me, do not forget me. I am very important. Yeah. Which he is. He is. He's not, he's not next. Chan Yol's next. Then you mean to, to get out? out? To get out. Because Chen is yeah. out. Chen got out like last week. Oh, <laughs> cute. And Back SM with his already announced that he will be at SM Town in Japan in August. He's on the poster. So everyone who thought that we weren't getting Chen, you're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> He's not yes. going anywhere. 
<laughs> yeah, Bakyan will probably be, I mean, aside from Kai and Sehun, who haven't even enlisted yet, <clears throat> but um, <laughs> Beck will be, will be uh, one of the last to get out because he has hypothyroidism, and so he sir, is doing a public service worker instead of active duty, um, which means that he has to serve for a little bit longer. True, true, mm-hmm. true, true. Um, but yeah, I'm sure he'll come back and slay like he always does. He always does. And uh, yeah, we... I can say from experience at the like SM con at the Super M concert, he is truly amazing. Like his yeah. voice is so good, mm-hmm. and he's it's so that, like oh, he's so so good. Like <laughs> to the point where it's almost like unbelievable the way that he sounds better live in person than he does on the recording. Like that's so rare. <laughs> that usually doesn't happen, and his voice is. His voice is really incredible. Like, it's not a surprise that he got cast so quickly and, like, didn't have to train for very long because he is just one of those people that is, like, ridiculously naturally talented. Mm -hmm. Um, And he fucking knows it. (laughs) He does know that. I would not call him a humble idol, maybe, if we were. No, I would (laughs) not call him humble at all. I don't know if I would call... No, maybe, like, Dio is humble. I was going to say I wouldn't consider any of the exos to be humble. (laughs) (laughs) But especially not that He's the... Aside from Chanyeol, maybe, he he and Chanyeol have the biggest egos of XO, I I would guess. That seems very fair. (laughs) So, uh, his most popular music video at the moment is for his song, Can. Andy, which was from his second release as a solo mm-hmm. artist in 2020. Yes. Um, and yeah, uh, it's a great song and it has 73 million views. Uh, so if you'd like to watch it along with us, you can pull it up and uh, press play when I tell you to. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Ooh, broken All right, candy, so we've so got I... like a dilapidated warehouse theater i got yeah where i mean i know it's a theater because it will eventually be a theater but it looks more like a warehouse and yeah he's got his like little undercut and his backwards t-shirt with the tag it's inside mm-hmm. out and oh, yeah. backwards <laughs> I, I never <laughs> noticed that yeah and he's wearing like a matching like track suit where like the the jack the baggy jacket and pants like match He's got Sponsored some... by Coke, a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Subtle product placement. Yeah, so basically the premise of this music video is that he and his friends, who are both guys and girls, have like broken into this abandoned movie theater, which is somehow still like, Yeah, it's spray painted, but the <laughs> but the food <laughs> thing is full of food. <laughs> yeah. But the best part about this is this. This yes, partner. This dance. little Yes, it's so mm-hmm. freaking cute. It's so cute, and he and this girl in the yellow top had, like, such good flirty eyes. They eye make contact. such eyes at each other. All the, the time. time. Yeah, like, in the music video, in the dance practice, on every single stage, Yumi and Jenna were like, they better be fucking. <laughs> <laughs> if they're not, I bet they weren't before this. I hope they did after. <laughs> this cute push, this pushed back hair in the red jacket is too cute. Yeah, Stop it is it. really cute. It's really fun, too, to see him do a song that has so much choreo because, like, You and Village was his first release, and he didn't really dance at all. Like, that was a song that, he, in the music video, he just stands around, and then in the the performances, he really did, too. There's just, like, one moment of choreo that's very slutty. Um, <laughs> but this one is fun because, like, he's not, like, a main dancer. He's a, he's a main vocal, and so he, like, his dance skills have really grown, which is yeah. fun, fun to see. Yeah, I felt similarly about like Onu's D- Dice release. Like I love yeah. when a so- when a main vocal does a solo and then like dances as well. Yeah, like me too. Fun. Me too. Because that's like a that's a hard thing to do. And like speaking of Queendom, they keep bringing it up in regards to Hyol and like doing something by yourself when you're used mm-hmm. to doing things in a group is like a whole thing. You have to command Absolutely. a lot of attention and have a lot of presence to like yeah. be the only one. Yeah, so true. 
And like, let's be real, the main vocals like get a lot of opportunities where they get to just like stand and sing or like <laughs> only do half of the choreo because they're singing. So yeah. to be able to do both. Ooh, this, ooh, these little, ooh, these little feet. Ooh. <laughs> I love this song. I, I liked his first EP, City Lights, more than this one, Delight. Mm. But this song is so catchy and fun. But his most recent, his last release, Bambi, that is where he like really goes off oh, with the, his voice. Oh, the shy. Oh. Yes. Oh, the high notes are so freaking nuts that whole ep is gorgeous so i was just thinking on that run i was like his his range is really out of this world like he can just go so high off the scales um but this this whole ep was kind of this vibe like it was a little more like party and like, and like yeah fun. a little like cool guy i don't know um but then bambi was like all like ooh. Let me lay you down, girl. And, like, <laughs> sing to you. And it was great. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Yay. So oh, back down. Oh, I'm so glad we got him. What yeah, fun. That was fun. <laughs> Come back to us soon. Back down. We need yes. some EXO in our lives. Yeah, or else we'll forget all about you. <laughs> <laughs> out of sight, out of mind with EXO for real. With EXO, yeah, it's true. It's true. It's it's better for our mental health that way, okay? They drive us so insane when they are around mm-hmm. that, like, for our own sanity, we must forget about them. Yeah. <laughs> we must put them aside <laughs> or else we will truly lose it. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> Um, weekly recommendation. Do you have anything that you want the people to listen to or see this week? Hmm. I don't know if I've really been keeping up. Let me think. Do you have anything? Off the I top have of something your head? that I would like to recommend. Okay. Um, I mean, in general, I would like to recommend the new Psy album because it's been five years oh, since yeah. we've had a Psy album and like I'm enjoying it so much. I just really, I just really like Psy and I'd like forgotten because it's really been, it's been so long since he's yeah. put out a whole album. It has been a long time and his, I, the title track is That That, right? Yes. And then today yes. he put out the video for Celeb with Susie and that was, I said on the show, because I remember when he did his SummerSlam in 2019, they played the celeb video and it was like supposed to come out the like next mm. weekend. But then there was like drama about like YG and he had to like go to court and testify against YG. Mm. And so it was like, no, don't release music right now because the yeah. vibe is bad. Um, but anyway, so that's finally like out, but it was like filmed forever ago. Um, and then I wonder if he's going to, I would imagine, cause it's been five years since he's put an album out and like almost every single song has like a crazy feature on it. I would mm-hmm. not be surprised if there are more music videos coming down the pipe yeah. cause he loves that stuff. He does love to put out music videos and the one that had the title track that, that features Suga of BTS yes. and he is in the music video as well. And that, that I like saw a lot of like funny stories about how like, it started out that basically like Shugo was just going to like produce and arrange the track. And then Sai convinced him to put a verse on it. And then Sai convinced him to be in the music video. And it just like got yeah. really uh, spun out of control. But what I was going to actually recommend, I mean, I stand by the album, listen to it, but my true recommendation is to check either the Instagram of Sai, P Nation, Hyuna, Don, whoever you want. But Hyuna, Don, and Sai did a that, that, uh video oh, and it is so fucking funny it's so funny because they like do the little bit and then when the song ends both don and hyana start like twerking up on Psy, and then the video goes for like another minute and a half and they're all just like going crazy <laughs> and like rolling on the ground and like twerking and it was so funny and it made my day so we that's my P-Nation actual antics. yeah that's my actual recommendation is that silly video nice um okay my recommendation is for a song that came out a little while ago um but i think i i like didn't realize 
when it I like missed the initial release of it. But Purple Kiss put out um, Pretty Psycho, which was like, I think it was a B-side off of the Memememem. The Memememe. Whatever that song is. That one, whatever that song was. I did not like that song for the record. Like, Memem. Memem. Whatever that was. M-E-M-E-M. I don't know. It had a lot of M's and a lot of E's. I was not a fan. Not a fan of that one at all. It sounded way too much like an Aspa ripoff. Like, I couldn't I couldn't yeah. swallow it. But I believe Pretty Psycho is a B-side off of that mm. EP. And it's super fun. It's like, has kind of the, like... I felt like it was such a more logical follow-up to a zombie than uh-huh, Memum, uh-huh. Memum, whatever. <laughs> because this one is... Because that song is, like, noisy and, like, discordant and I don't like it. But Pretty Psycho is... It still keeps with the, like, creepiness that mm-hmm. Purple Kiss has kind of, like, made their concept. But it also has a bit of the, like disco elements of uh, like the like funner side of zombie it's kind of like a medium like it's 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 scarier okay. than <laughs> zombie um but it's not like a harsh sound it's super groovy it's really catchy um the music video is fun and they've also put out a dance practice as well the choreo is really cool um and i liked it i liked it a lot so i was really worried when they put out the other one that i was like no don't go down this road and then they put out pretty psycho and i was like oh okay good this is okay. what i this you is what I want. It, this is what I like. We still you have, have it lost to your essence yet. We have not. We have not <laughs> abandoned our main concept. Um, so yeah. So I like that. Pretty good. purple kiss. Pretty psycho. Good. 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 Love it. Perfect. Um, well, great. That's it for this week. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little Patreon tease, and that all of the patrons who already heard it liked the random game part of the episode. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much for listening. And as always, if you want to join Patreon to get more Queendom recaps as well as like 20 other video episodes, we've done so many like silly dance games and mukbangs and all there's stage so much outfits, stuff. spotlights. We've there's had Patreon for two things. years now. So there's like yeah. a lot of stuff on there. Yeah, and as soon as you sign up, you have access to all of the back catalog. So you won't have to wait ne- until next month for new content. You'll be able to peruse everything we've Every already put out. Every single thing. Yeah. So that's patreon.com slash Pod. Um, and everywhere else, we are available at Pod on Twitter and Instagram, amakpoppod at gmail.com for emails, 181amakpop5 for texts and voicemails, P.O. Box 26096, Los Angeles, California, 90. 90- 026 for mail um link tree slash ama kpop will take you to our youtube and spotify for playlists as well as our discord where you can talk to um lots of other listeners to the show about whatever you want all day oh speaking of the discord i just want to say this on the show to all of the german listeners that are going to meet at your kpop flex concert oh, this yeah. weekend if you're comfortable i would really love it if you guys would like take take pictures together or like record a little voice note i just want to like i just want to see your meetup because i think it's so nice that you're all going to this fun con like i'm excited that germany's getting a k-pop concert and that like yeah. so many of our listeners are gonna go like meet and be friends at it i'm so excited <laughs> yeah. for you guys and we would love to also hear like about your experience at the concert so whether it's you know like after you guys see everything if you want to record a little like breathless voice note tell squealing about how good it was we you know we want to hear it yes we definitely want to hear it mm-hmm. um but yeah that is it uh we will be back next week hopefully with some unrecycled content we'll get our <laughs> lives back together it's we'll fine do something it's new. fine it's we fine. won't let you down um we love you thank you goodbye <laughs> bye jongyan you're our inspiration bye.